How's it going? Hope you all had an amazing and refreshing break because we're about to dive into another amazing session here. So uh, my name is Joe Corsione. I'm the partner manager here at Trainual. So if you're in our Process People program or maybe one of our affiliates, you probably recognize my name. But if you don't know who I am, it's so great to meet you. So today we're going to be bringing on a few of our certified consultants to teach you how to build scalable processes in, our, in, in your business and your systems and everything that is included in there. And as you heard from Ryan before, uh, these certified consultants are here to help you uh, get help with your training account if you need it. Um, but before we dive into that session, I want to introduce the panel host to this discussion. His name is Bradford Jones, and he's one of our success coaches here at Trainual. Funny story about Bradford. He was actually one of our first certified consultants, and his firm was called The Process People. And he did such an amazing job as one of our consultants that he actually came onto our team to really help to foster this community of certified consultants and really work with our partners uh, with with implementing services or service packages for our clients as well. So we wanted to pay homage to Bradford's original firm by naming our community of certified consultants, the process people. So um, just as I said before, process people is our community of certified consultants that are here to help you get it set up for success in your training will account. So at the end of this session or at the end of this day or wherever, if that's something that does interest you, you want to bring on someone to help you with your training will account, feel free to send me an email at joe at trainual.com. I'll be more than happy to get you all set up. But enough about that. Let's kick it over to Bradford to kick off this amazing session with three of our certified consultants. Bradford, take it away, my man. Thank you so much, Joe, for that nice introduction. I really appreciate it. You're an awesome teammate. So thank you for that. Hey, everyone. As Joe said, my name is Bradford. I'm the success coach for implementation here at Trainual, And I'm super excited to have some amazing certified consultants uh, here with us on this call today. You're going to love hearing from these people. They're experts in their field. Uh, so I'm super excited to invite them in. So uh, let's make sure everybody's rolling in here. It looks like we are. Great. We've got people joining us from all over today. So I'm super excited about that. Uh, so the first person I'd like to introduce you to is Chris Gwynn. He's the founder and CEO of Great Lakes Advisory. Chris, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Bradford. Awesome. And our next panelist today is Tamara Kemper. She's the founder of The Process Mavens. Tamara, we already got a good plug for you. So uh, just like that, I was not planned, of course, uh, but we're excited to have you with us as well. Hey, Bradford. Thanks for having me. And we also have Josh Fonger. He's the CEO of WTS Enterprises. Uh, Josh is one of our original certified consultants as well. So Josh, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much again for being here. Uh, we're really excited to dive into this. As I said, all these folks are uh, process consultants. They're experts. So you're going to really want to dive in here. Make sure you have your notepad ready uh, so that you're, you're able to, to hear from these folks and, and keep all that information. Uh, so we're going to jump into the first question. We're going to get here. We're going to go panel style and let everybody answer uh, one question at a time. So we'll roll through that. Uh, so as we know, uh, there's a lot of things that go into building a scalable business. We all wish we could snap our fingers and have a scalable business just automatically. And we're ready to grow. And if you want to franchise, you're ready to franchise or whatever scalable means to, uh, to an entrepreneur. Uh, we all wish we could snap our fingers and it happen. Of course, it doesn't happen like that. My background's in the hospitality industry. So I think of building a scalable business like baking a cake. It takes a bunch of ingredients, right, uh, to be able to bake an amazingly delicious cake. And uh, so I'm interested to hear from our certified consultants today. What are some ingredients that uh, just like in the, if we're baking a cake, what are some ingredients that we could use uh, to build a scalable business? And, and what would that look like? I want to start this one with Tamara. Uh, Tamara, what are some ingredients that you know uh, that would help build a scalable business? Well, I think the big thing is going to be getting really clear on from the, from the lead of the organization where you're going. And, and what your vision is and what you want to head towards, because that clarity for the rest of your team is going to give them all clarity to be able to know how their role fits in and how to be able to get that done. So before you jump into processes and you get into the nitty gritty, just really being clear on what is it that we're building and then getting to the next phase of, okay, so then how do each of these processes fit in with that? What's the purpose of each of these things that we want to do? Um, it's a really important first step. And then, of course, adding in the core values that are those guidelines of where we want to stay in the bounds of, um, of the business. That's awesome. Ryan talked about alignment uh, in the previous mm -hmm. uh, segment. So it sounds like you need alignment from the top down. So For sure. uh, that's, that's phenomenal. Christopher, I'd love to hear from you next on this one. 
Yeah, of course. And kind of uh, picking back in off of your cake example, um, the most common ingredients in, I guess you're probably your basic cake is probably, I, I don't know, butter, flour, baking powder, sugar, and eggs, and probably milk. So the key here is not to include ingredients that really aren't your bare necessity of that recipe and at which you can kind of relate to some of your organizational processes. So probably not including, I don't know, yeast or maybe actually baking soda that would actually ruin the recipe. So it's really important to be able to get down to the bare necessities of the process, keep it super, super simple and make sure that the process is crystal clear so that you can achieve the same exact result or outcome. And that way you can always have a delicious cake fresh out of the oven every single time. I love it. I'm getting hungry. It's lunchtime here in Arizona. So uh, I'm going to have lunch soon. Now I'm hoping they deliver cake as well. Um, Josh, <laughs> I'm excited to hear from you about this one as well. I know you've seen lots of businesses uh, create, sure. uh, you've seen lots of scalable businesses created. So I'm interested to hear your take on this. Yeah. What uh, Tamara said and Chris said are, are both uh, obviously true. Um, first off, I would say, you know, get this book if you want to see what, what works, but beyond just the book, right. Um, what we teach our consultants um, when they want to actually systemize a business is we bring them through a training module, which is called leading the change. Because like Tamara said, if you don't have uh, clear leadership, uh, a whole pile of procedures is not really going to help you a whole lot. Um, even if they're in a, a nifty software like Trainable, you really have to have that leadership piece. And so I would say leadership is key. Uh, shared vision is key. So if the leader has this vision, but the, the people don't follow it, again, it's not going to work um, because they have to actually make sure that they, they buy into it. Uh, on top of that, they need to have a new skill. So following processes, following procedures, um, using a software is a new skill. So again, if you put it all in there, but you don't teach them how to use this tool, um, it won't get used, right? And so it's a new skill that entrepreneurs usually are easy to um, learn new skills, but your team usually is, is slower. Um, you also have to have an incentive. So following process as a business is not normal. It's not intuitive. Most people don't do it. So if you don't give your team an incentive and the resources, you know, the time, the technology to actually follow through, um, it's not going to work. And then also you need to actually give them the structure, you know, the structure around using this new tool, using this new playbook. Um, they might see this is great, but can I revise it? Can I improve it? Can I write, you know, can I use it for training? What can I, what are the rules for this new tool? And if you don't have the structure, again, people will just stick with what they're used to. They won't try something new. And then ultimately you need to have an, an action plan. So there's some, there's some components where if you just give someone a playbook, um, it will fall flat in its face unless you have some key structural pieces. And you know, that could all go under the, the headline of leadership, but the leader has to know that if they don't have these pieces, uh, it, it's going to die somewhere in the water. And I, I, fortunately, my experience is working with lots of companies where it's died somewhere along the way. And then, and then they give us a call. Yeah, absolutely. I want to uh, focus in a little on something that all of you mentioned, but both Josh and Tamara really said, and uh, it's about leadership buy-in and leadership alignment. I was reading the chat earlier today, and there's tons of folks here uh, who are, maybe they run the HR department, or maybe they're an operations manager. If you're in the chat uh, today, we'd love to hear who is not a founder at your company, or maybe you made the decision uh, to implement training in your company, and you had to get buy-in from the leadership. Um, I'd love for you all to share some some uh, secrets or some tips on maybe the team communicating up the leadership chain, or maybe someone when you had to pitch uh, your boss or your leader um, on the idea of Trainual. Has anyone seen this? Uh, I'll just kind of open this up to the to the panel here. Has anyone seen a, a scenario like this where um, you've had to get some buy-in from the uh, on the way up instead of on the way down? Uh, I actually probably have always seen it go the other way, um, where. I'm usually approached by leadership. Um, I do find that I feel like uh, many times we'll see some key employees are maybe a little threatened by the idea of kind of documenting their processes and potentially feeling that they might be kind of expendable. Um, so I guess I haven't really experienced where we need to kind of um, convince, I guess, sort of the reverse of where we're having key employees uh, convince their leadership that this is important. But I guess, uh, for leadership, the reason why it's so important is that you need to be able, and it goes, I think I, I kind of skimmed some of the chat, but it looked like there's several businesses or several um, 
I guess, uh, people in the chat that actually ran on EOS. And it kind of goes back to some of those components of the process component that Gino Wickman developed within Traction that you need to be able to document your process, but you also need to make sure that it's being followed by all. And so it's super important that you do receive that buy-in from not only the leadership, but from everyone in your company. And usually to be able to get that buy-in, it really needs that messaging really does need to come from leadership. Yeah, people are lighting up the chat. I'm going to let somebody else answer, but it's exciting to me when I see people uh, who maybe aren't the founder or the, the final decision maker bringing solutions to the, the final decision maker. I'm reading the chat as I go right now. This is exciting. So I'll open this up uh, back again uh, to Josh or Tamara if you have any thoughts on this, uh, this phenomenon here. Yeah, a couple, couple of thoughts. Um, and it's a lot harder if someone, you know, second, third, fourth in command is trying to push this thing forward. And so I've seen it successfully done where a department decides they really want to get their systems dialed in. And so whether it's an HR department or IT or whatever it might be, and then they, they have control over their team, their department, and they get it all dialed in and then convince the leadership that the rest of the company should make this happen. But um, if someone is second or third in command, they say, hey, we're going to do this thing. And then the owner, the leader says, oh, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, we should try that. It, it's, it's not going to work or it's going to work it's going to take about five years longer than it should take. So it'll be very, very, very slow. And so um, I, I don't suggest, if you are you know, lower down the totem pole, I don't suggest you just start going full speed into it. I would instead spend your time trying to convince the leadership why they should do this so that your efforts aren't squandered. Because you can burn up a lot of time and effort and then have it just be meaningless. So don't, don't burn yourself out. Maybe the term proof of concept could be used there if you're working uh, together and build a proof of concept for your, for leadership to take a look at and see if it's worth pursuing. So, uh, Tamara, any thoughts on this one? Yeah, I, I'm I'm with Chris and Josh. It's typically not the way uh, we we hear from businesses, but I have seen it work where a team will kind of start using it, and then you'll see the people from the other team go, "Oh, what what is that?" And it can kind of organically work in that way. Um, but in terms of just kind of brute force, like let's just muscle through this and get this implemented, maybe not so much. I, I <laughs> either start with leadership or infect from the from the, the team within, but I don't I don't think a brute force approach works. Yeah. Awesome feedback. Well, well, thanks for that. Um, I, Chris was given a rounding us off some ingredients. So I'm going to go back to my cake example here for a minute and talk about things that can ruin a cake or that can ruin, uh, you know, ingredients, uh, when you're building a scalable business, what are some things that can derail that or ruin that? And I would love to, to see this. And, um, in my consulting background, I would see a lot of things, uh, that would happen and you could kind of look and point to, Hey, this is going to be a problem later, or, Hey, this isn't super scalable. And I'd love to hear, uh, if you all have any examples of uh, maybe behaviors or actions or uh, things that you see in businesses that don't allow a company to scale. And so Josh, let's start with you on this one. Sure. Yeah. I think I would start with the proverb, you know, what is it? Uh, pride goes before destruction. It's, um, it's essentially every time I've worked with a company, the owners expect it to get done faster and easier than it does but they also underestimate the impact it's going to have on their team, on themselves, on their future. And so the biggest negative ingredient would be uh, thinking they can do it faster than they can do, or maybe impatience. And so they'll get started. And then after it's kind of hard, you know, to get everyone to buy into this, to use the new technology, to use the systems, to write down what they do. And they think it's gonna happen in a few weeks. And when it doesn't just instantly happen, they go off into other things and easier things and faster things and and then they get stuck in another project and so that's that's the number one negative ingredient is an owner that doesn't have maybe the long-term vision doesn't have the backbone and doesn't have the patience to stick with it and understand that this is going to make a big difference and um and so there's there's a thousands of little things that can go wrong, you know, in terms of not naming your procedures correctly or trying to go too fast or, you know, poor employees in the middle of, of how it works. But ultimately, the number one reason why these things don't work is because um, we already know what's going to work is because the owner won't stick with it long enough and won't push through long enough. And it, again, it's overestimation of what they can get done and then um, underestimating the ROI. And so they just they stop. 
That's awesome. We have an ROI question, so we're going to come back to that one, but you spoke to it for a second. So put a pin in that. We're going to come back. Uh, Christopher, let's get your thoughts on this. Do you have any more ingredients? Uh, do you have any more food references for us so I can continue building my appetite here? Yeah, no more food references. That was kind of the only one I thought of off the top of my head. But um, I would say that uh, one of the major ways to kind of ruin or, um, I guess, prevent or, I guess, not find a lot of success in creating a scalable process is when really there's maybe some type of uh, above the law type mentality where we think that we not, I, hey, I know that this is the process that exists, but I don't really need to do this. I don't really need to follow that. Or maybe there's um, the leadership isn't really leading by example. So I think it's really critical in as you're can, as you're building out your entire business playbook on Trainual, that you're always really communicating the why. And the why is really what starts to resonate the most and why it makes the most sense um, in the end user's mind. So it's important that you don't just come, come at all of your processes kind of like a tyrant and just saying that just do this, do this. But there's usually a lot of reasons and rationale for why these processes are structured the way that they are. And it might be for efficiency reasons. It might be for profitability reasons. But it's important that you communicate the why you get everyone on board with really kind of buying into all of these, uh, to all of your processes and that you really kind of push any egos aside and lead by example. And I think that uh, without kind of those elements um, with process implementation and kind of adoption sometimes kind of uh, can fall short, but yeah. It seems like we could do an entire session on the why and sharing the why with your team. Maybe I'm going to uh, get with Sean Jensen and we'll figure out a training webinar to do that because that's such a deep topic of sharing with your team the why. So I love that. Um, Chris, Tamara, what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I, I agree with Chris. I think, I think that getting the team on board is super important. And if I kind of get the sense when I'm first talking to a CEO that he is using Trainual as some sort of heavy object to beat, <laughs> beat their people into compliance, it's usually not quite that dramatic, but, but truly like there has to, you have to go into this project with a, with a spirit of, um, you know, this, this is, this is the, the ownership of the team. The team is, is building this. The team has accountability for these processes. This is going to help the team because if you're doing it in the same way that you can't have the second in command, you know, steamroll into things and say, let's do this. You really can't have the CEO do that either because yes, the CEO can get it done, but is it actually going to take shape and is it going to take on a life of its own in the way that you really want it to? Um, the other thing that I see a lot is people coming in and, and they'll tell me like, I want to document my business. And what they mean is they want to document every single thing in their business. And they, they're like, well, we'll just write it all down. We'll just get it all down. And that is in my experience, a recipe. And in fact, we used to think about it that way. And after bumping into walls several times, refined our processes a lot to know it has to be a much more focused scope and you have to be able to eat, eat the elephant one, one bite at a time. You're not documenting your process. You're, you're focusing on a real result that's going to move your business forward in a measurable, meaningful way. That's awesome. I love that. Uh, yeah, you, you spoke about getting the team involved and all that. And you said this, the CEO can make it happen, but when you, it's a special thing to see it. I think all of us uh, that are chatting now have seen it when, a, when an organization rallies around this being an important thing. Uh, it, it's really magic. And so I, I love that, that feedback there. You know, most everybody here who's on the Trainual Insider Summit uh, today has made the decision to subscribe to Trainual. They may have a scalable business that they need to document. They may be building a scalable business that ultimately they're going to have to document, but they're considering all these processes. And so, uh, you know, obviously we talk a lot about the word playbook here at Trainual and what that means. Uh, you folks have really helped a lot of companies build super effective playbooks. If you bump into an entrepreneur on the street and they say, I want to build my playbook, <laughs> uh, what is a piece of advice that you could give them in passing uh, that, that you wish everybody would know when they embark on this uh, playbook building process? And uh, Tamara, let's start with you on this one. Yeah, I guess I'll just piggyback off the last point I made, which is that if you can kind of 
chunk it into small little bites. So prioritize what it is in your bit. Like, don't worry about documentation. Don't even think about it as documentation. Think about in my business, what do I need to move forward? What result do I need to get through this documentation? So maybe it's a role that you're hiring all the time or you're onboarding all the time. Maybe it's something where um, you have somebody that is at risk, an employee that's at risk, and you've got to get some information out of their head. Think about what's going on in your business and then scope that small project of like, okay, we're going to get this done. We're going to get this piece documented and get that done and get that sense of um, accomplishment and start using it. Implement it. Don't build all the stuff and then go, ta-da, because it doesn't work. <laughs> doesn't work. Start using it. Get it out. Get using it. And then go to the next project and the next project. And if you think about it in terms of what you're changing in your business, you'll start to see how much it's really impacting too. You know, I heard something uh, one time that said, everyone loves to win. Uh, and you think about some of the best uh, athletes ever, and they talk about really hating losing. And that's what motivated them. And we don't want to be a loser. But uh, and not everyone has that drive uh, <laughs> to not be a loser. But a lot of people love winning. And so when you talk about uh, getting some small wins throughout there and really getting your team together and saying, hey, you did a great job on that. You've uh, done a phenomenal job. Like everyone loves to win. <laughs> uh, so I love uh, just kind of what you're saying there and taking it step by step. Um, and making it achievable. That's uh, super awesome insight, Tamara. Christopher, let's go to you on this one. Yeah, and I think this kind of goes back to sort of an earlier point about getting that, uh, really that buy-in and having all the messaging coming from the top down. Um, I think it needs to be really a department by, and really a team effort to be able to tackle this in-house. And so like Tamara said, I think that you really need to break this up into kind of smaller bite-sized chunks, kind of in sort of prioritize where some of your documentation is going to kind of bear the most fruit. And if you have huge plans to maybe onboard another 25 employees within just one particular role. Well, that role is obviously very important and you're going to get a lot more bang for your buck and for your the amount of time that you're going to spend uh, on that, on all of your documentation effort. If you start to focus on all of the standard operating procedures, processes, training around there. Um, outside of that, I think it's just really important to be able to just stay committed. Um, so just making sure that you're getting everyone involved by department um, through your leadership, kind of bringing up the project, um, blocking off time on your calendar and just setting deadlines and being able to just meet regularly um, with your leadership and anyone else that's involved in the process to make sure that you're staying on track because it does have a tendency to kind of fall by the wayside. It's clearly documentation doc and building training and everything on the training world platform is super, super valuable for the business. But a lot of times the business will still exist if this stuff isn't done, but it's super important that you need to be able to actually prioritize that and set deadlines just so that you can make sure that you stay on track. Yeah. Awesome. Love it. So Josh, you bump into an entrepreneur on the street and they say, we're going to start building our, our playbook. What do you want them to know? I'd say, listen to Tamara and uh, Chris first. <laughs> all great ideas. Those things all totally work. Um, just on a, on a, maybe a different level would be say your playbook is not just what you do, which you're going to write down, but it's the way you do your work. And so our company is going to have a way of doing work. And that way of doing work is by building our processes, following our processes, updating our processes, training with our processes, measuring. So you get the idea. So it's, it's, a, it's a way we work. And so that's, you know, to Chris's point, it's going to fall by the wayside if it's just what we do and you're writing it down so you can file it away. Because I've, I've worked with plenty of companies where they, they have 500 procedures when I get there, just none of them use them. And so we have to start from scratch. And so you have to develop a way of using processes in your business. And if, if, that's, if it's the way you're going to do business, then the tool will be used because the tool will, like, like Tamara said, you're going to use the tool every day. Even if you only have five procedures written inside there, you're going to use them, right? Because you actually, it's a way you do business. And if, as long as they go in with that approach, they can start getting ROI the first week of using it. And they'll get more ROI the second week. And then and over time, it's going to become the, the greatest asset in their business, and it's going to be extremely valuable, but they have to see it as the way we do business. And um, until they're willing to, to do that, it's just going to be a project where they, they want to cram a bunch of stuff, a bunch of SOPs into a folder, feel like they're done, and they've missed out on all the, the gold that can be mined by engaging everyone's mind. Like, what do you do? How do you do that? Why is it the best way? And if you can really 
allow your team to be a part of it and slow down enough to have them engage their minds and how they do what they do, you can really make you know, an awesome playbook. Um, so I think that's probably what I would say is slow down, make it the way you do work, and you're going to get a lot more benefit out of it. That's awesome. For those entrepreneurs that love uh, moving at warp speed, that's going to be a change in mindset for them. So that's awesome feedback. I want to get, um, we got about just a, a minute or two left and I want to get about maybe 30 seconds from each of you on this one. You know, now in the, in this uh, uh, leadership world and uh, managers and all that, we've embraced this idea of you hire a business coach, or maybe, you know, you hire an accountability partner or people uh, hire personal trainers to go to the gym. Um, tell me just real quickly what you would tell an entrepreneur entrepreneur when they're considering bringing in a process consultant to help them document um, and build a playbook in your team. And so, uh, Josh, let's go right back to you on this one. We got just a few seconds for you. Sure. Real quick, I, I would just say that um, you know, I wrote my, my thesis paper in, in my MBA program about why you should never hire outside help. Just do it all yourself. It's going to be faster. It's going to be easier. Don't trust them. But now that I am a consultant, I'm wearing the other, side, <laughs> the other shoes here. Um, there's a huge value in talking to somebody. Talk to anybody on the list here who's certified. They're all going to have great advice. Um, you as an entrepreneur, this is not what you think about. This is not what you do day in, day out. So bring in someone at least for an hour or two to talk to them about what are some potential roadblocks, some hazards, some things you haven't considered. You know, it, it's worth a call to anybody to at least talk to someone who is obsessed about this and who's, who's seen it enough times to help you out. Uh, just like if you're going to do a, a contract, you know, it would cost you a lot of money to have a, a, a lawyer write the whole thing for you, but anybody who does business would at least have the lawyer double check it at the end, you know, at least be involved a little bit. So um, I would say get some help if you want to do it, you know, faster, easier, with less risk, with higher impact. And if your team is already maxed out, which most people, their team is maxed out. And if your team doesn't have experience in this, then it, I think it would be somewhat foolish to at least not ask for a little bit of help along the way. Now, using help, the help might be 2% or the help might be 80%, but getting a little bit of help along the way, I think is a really smart move. So um, awesome. I'm, I'm all for it. Thanks, Josh. Chris, uh, quickly to you on this one. I don't think Josh would have probably gotten a very good grade on his thesis. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. But uh, no, I think having an outsider's perspective, uh, look at your business process is actually always valuable. Um, I mean, I own my own business. I'm an entrepreneur myself. And I think Many times when you're working in your business, I think a lot of times there's some responsibilities, there's parts of the process that just seem very intuitive, self-explanatory. And I think that's when it find, it, we, tend, we tend to see that those are sort of the areas or the responsibilities that tend to get overlooked and typically just aren't documented. And so I think by having kind of a fresh set of eyes, really review and walk through each of these processes and actually document them through with you, or maybe have a, a business coach to be able to kind of have that outside perspective or just help hold you accountable. Um, I can, I believe it can be really pivotal or sorry, uh, can be really pivotal in your business. Um, because as you're just discussing these processes, you're really just continuing to peel back um, the onion until you really you just get to the core of the process. And so that a brand new hire that does also have a fresh set of eyes is able to understand all of your responsibilities and your processes um, just as well as you do. That's awesome. Tamara, bring us home. I've got about 30 seconds for you on this one. Okay. So to, uh, I'm going to give a really obvious answer, which is if there's an ROI for it, you should do that. You should, you should bring someone in. So that is going to be, if you have a repeatable role, you have a role where you're going to be hiring that role again and again and again, you need somebody to come in and help because a professional is going to be able to help you figure out how to assess the learning that you need. Or they're going to be able to make sure that, you know, the new people coming through actually know their stuff. So you're not going to be making kind of a waste of time training course. Um, that's that's got to be there. And the other would be if you've scaled to a point that you are stuck and you can't keep growing unless you have this training and you don't have anybody on their team because like Josh said, they're totally maxed out. There is an ROI there. You need to get somebody in there to help you go ahead and build that stuff so that you can get to that next level. Those would be the two big cases, I would say for sure, to get a consultant to help. 
you all are so smart. I'm so glad we have you all on our team here as consultants uh, here with Trainual. And so uh, we are going to wrap up uh, this part of the session. I want to thank you all so much for being here. So much wisdom. If you want to connect with any of these uh, Trainual certified consultants, super easy to find them. Go to trainual.com slash consultants. We've got the whole listing there. You can filter by who you're looking to work with. As all these consultants would tell you, uh, not everyone's a perfect fit for every company. So use those filters and check that out. Um, but thank you all so much for the time. We super, super appreciate it. Hope you all have a good one. Thanks again, Bradford. Thanks, Bradford. My pleasure, you all. I'm going to jump into, we've got a super uh, exciting thing for our awards. So we're going to give out some awards for our top five certified consultants. This is really exciting uh, because we are jumping into the top five con certified consultants of 2021. These are all folks who have had great impacts on Trainual's uh, customer community. They've referred us a ton of business. They've done a lot of projects for our customers. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump into who our top five Trainual certified consultants are for the year. Uh, number five coming in at number five is Jennifer Dawn. Congratulations. Top five. That's a great accomplishment there. Allison Caffrey, number four. So great job, Allison. Allison's been with us since almost the beginning. So we're uh, happy to have her continue on with us. Liz Illig. Uh, we work closely with Liz on a lot of different projects. So Liz, congratulations. Uh, top three, you would get a bronze medal if this were the Olympics. Uh, John Sproul. This is someone uh, who has some uh, specific industry expertise and has worked with a lot of uh, customers around the country. And so we're super excited for John uh, to come in in that second spot. So uh, drum roll here. I've got my lap. I don't have anything else for a drum roll, please. But our top uh, certified consultant for 2021, you just heard from him, Christopher Gwynn. Uh, congratulations, Christopher. He's helped us a lot here at Trainual. He's helped a ton of Trainual customers all over the world. So congratulations to you, Christopher. We're super excited for you. Um, if you've liked what you heard today and you want to be a member of our Process People community or you think this is a good fit for your business, as Joe said, email him at joe.trainual.com.